Hello, my name is Eve Martin and I'm with Netgonian.com. In this video, we're going to go over domain names and how they're used on the internet. The first thing we're going to take a look at is basically how the internet is set up. The internet consists of a lot of wiring that crisscrosses the entire earth and connects up computers. It actually connects up hundreds of millions of computers. One of the primary uses of the internet is for one computer over here to get something from another computer over here, usually a website. As you can see, in order to do that, this computer has to know where that computer is so it can get in communication with it and browse the website. So one of the first problems of the internet was how do we distinguish locations on the internet? And the solution to that was to give each of these locations a special number, one that looks like this, 74.25.35.245. You may recognize that as an IP address. It's a special kind of IP address known as a public IP address. Public IP addresses are regulated by a large corporation known as the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, also known as ICANN. When you get a public IP address, you have to buy it from ICANN and they regulate to ensure that only one person owns an IP address and therefore helping to ensure that there aren't two computers or two locations on the internet with the same public IP address. Therefore, if you wanted to get the website on that web server, all you have to do is type in that IP address into your web browser and there you go. However, you can see that that's not very practical because these numbers are not easy to remember. And as you know, that's not usually how you get to a website. The way you get to a website is using something called a URL or Uniform Resource Locator because it locates things, it locates a resource like a website on the network. They look something like this, www.netgonian.com. So somehow, this URL gets translated into that number and gets you to this website. Let's take a look on a computer how that works. The first thing I'm going to do is get to the website the normal way, which is by typing in the URL. And there you can see I already had it in there. And it takes me right to the web page. Now the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is typing in the IP address and you can see that that too will bring me to the web page. And I'll show you what goes on behind the scenes. Basically your computer does something like what I'm going to do here using a command called NSLOOKUP. NSLOOKUP stands for Name Server Lookup and what it does is it takes a URL which is basically a name, a name of a computer, and looks up the IP address and you can see that here. Now let's move on to domain names. Domain names are names over which somebody has control. They have control because they own it and they purchased it. We're going to take a look at how that happens. But first, recall that essentially a website, which is a resource on the internet, resides at an IP address like that. We could get to that website by typing in the IP address, but that's not very practical. Instead, we use something that looks like that, which is a URL or a uniform resource locator. This URL breaks down into a first part, which is a domain name, and the last part, which is the name of the host or resource that we're trying to contact. That host or resource is something that is attached to the internet at an IP address. You'll notice here that the domain name itself has two parts. A top-level domain, .com, 
and a second level domain, Nectonian. It could have a third level domain and a fourth level domain, but the important thing to remember is that the first part of the URL is the domain name and the last part is the host or resource. Now let's go take a look at how you buy a domain name. At the Nectonium.com website, you can purchase your own domain name by clicking on the Domain Names tab, which brings you to the screen where you can search for a domain name. First, what you want to do is decide what top-level domain are you going to use. Do you want your domain name to be a .com domain name, a .info, a .mobi, .net, etc.? I'm going to choose .com for now and I'm going to type in something I already checked to see if it was available and I'll hit search and as you can see I'm told that Nekonian32.com is available and it's already checked off for me and I'm also being informed of some other popular top-level domains that uh, my domain name is available in and you'll see if I mouse over that it'll tell me a little bit about the top level domain and why I might want to choose it. So that's a, that's a neat little feature we have here. Again, as I mentioned, a lot of these top level domains sort of have a, uh, a commonly assumed um, meaning, but they're not very heavily regulated. So, for instance, this one here says the popular choice for non-commercial organizations also used by businesses to showcase their charitable activities. However, there's no regulation of that. Certainly a commercial organization could choose a .org domain name and put, whatever, put, put an e-commerce website up there if they wanted to. Once you've selected which one you want by putting a check, then you simply continue the process by clicking this button down here and you'll check out and be master of your own domain name.